So it is helpful to, to like to really learn and understand the metaphysics and then to like you know, it seems intellectual to kind of recall the, all the metaphysics and like take it step by step into what the real cause of all the emotions and perceptions is. But you're saying at some point as you start to move into the experience you have to really be willing to let all that be forgotten and then just trust that the, the healing will continue without, without the metaphysics or without the, the intellectual understanding. Yep, I think I see how the metaphysics were extremely helpful for me and I could also see the enormous resistance to those metaphysics. And so that's why I would go to course groups and I would let the Spirit speak those metaphysics, <coughs> teach what I would learn and reinforce them over and over and over. Um, because they're so valuable, they were very valuable for me. I kind of classify all errors in two categories. One are metaphysical errors and one's transfer training errors. So you get some really famous Course in Miracles teachers that I think are quite good on the metaphysics for the most part you know, quite, they would be like high marks in that, but the transfer of training is very poor. That's the example of hiring a lawyer, um, you know, uh, I would say that's a transfer of training error. It's not someone who could be very clear in the metaphysics, uh, They're just not applying it to their own life. but they have made major exceptions and, and to hire a lawyer, you know, it would be an example of a, of a transfer of training error. So for myself, I really had to get super clear on the metaphysics and then I just started to apply them to everything and just say, leave nothing out. You know, don't hold pockets of self-concept out and say, oh no, in this case, you know, I'm just going to, you know, have to be practical. Know that it's practical to apply the metaphysics to everything. That's really what practical is. So whether, I mean, if I look at my life and apply the metaphysics and make choices around them, whether another person looks, I mean I make a choice around something and they judge it as bad, it's not the thing, it's my mind that has to, okay, this, I thought this before, but now I, I make a choice of having the correct met metaphysical judgment of it, as you say. And yeah. Like, even though before I had a belief that this was bad, now I change it. Yeah. Is the way to do it, or I mean, you can't change this physical environment too much. It's like more the, the mind <coughs> belief. Because yeah. the people are just reflections. Like, for example, this, uh, you've gone to a lot of different spiritual retreats, different ones, and that's reinforced some spiritual teachings. Maybe it involved, like for example, vegetarianism was part of the spiritual teaching and now you're starting to take a look at vegetarianism, you're taking a look at the whole concept of nutrition or what's, what's a more spiritual diet, you know. You, you can see there's a lot of stuff that's packed there is in there. Such a good and now you're starting to see it as a mental process, you're working with your thoughts and beliefs, whereas before it was more out there on the surface. Okay, these are the things a spiritual person would would do, these are the things a spiritual person wouldn't do. Magical vegetables. Like, yeah. To receive spiritual... Yeah. Magical vegetables. <laughs> and even though Jesus said it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles, you know, now it's, here we are, practical mind training, you know, facing those things. And then, once you have these shifts and you start to feel a loosening going on in your mind and more of a flow, it's not going to matter what people tell you. People can come back from some of your old spiritual days and say, Thomas Thomas Erickson, what have you gotten into? Have you lost all sense of spirituality? But it won't matter, you know, you'll be in a peace of mind and that's what counts.